June 1976, riots break out in Soweto. Black school pupils taking to the streets. Protesting against apartheid, rejecting Afrikaans as a language of instruction. Police opening fire on peaceful protesters. Innocent blood staining the ground. Fires scorching large swaths of the township. Now, four decades on, their blood still crying out for a resolution. Township fires long since extinguished. Yet the language debate still burning bright in the hearts of millions of people in a growing democracy. In this society, on this earth, in this day, which we intended to bring into existence. Is Afrikaans as a language of instruction in danger of being wiped out? May 2016, the Constitutional Court in Johannesburg, confirming that the Education Department has the power to decide admissions policy in schools. Education is a human right with immense power to transform. On its foundation rests the cornerstone of freedom, democracy, <coughs> and sustainable human development. Malala Yousafzai eloquently stated there are many problems in the world, but I think there is a solution to all of these problems, and it's just one. It's education. A victory for the Gauteng Education Department and the MEC, bringing them a step closer to fulfilling their plan of converting Afrikaans-only schools into dual medium. We'll treat all, language equal, all languages equally. We'll treat all languages fairly. But we'll never have a school that wants to have its own language only and exclude other people. There I differ, you know. I really believe Somebody speaking closer can be in the same class with somebody that is speaking Afrikaans. I really believe someone can be taught in Afrikaans and in closer in the same school. But if you feel that you need this school only for Afrikaners or this school only for closers, we are not in the same wavelength. I really believe our children should play together and sing together and learn together. MEC Panyazali Sufi on record saying, this is not a language issue, but one of access to education. The MEC also assuring single-medium schools of government's best intentions. We will go and meet with Afrikaners. And we'll explain to Afrikaners that your schools are not under threat. Your language is not under threat. We are calling for a non-racial education system across the board. If non-racialism is something you don't want, unfortunately we'll impose it on you. The language issue by no means limited to schools. The debate also raging in tertiary institutions. Students going on the rampage. In their anger, destroying property and disrupting classes. Demanding abolition of Afrikaans as a medium of instruction. Whenever a language is imposed on you, 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 you adopt that certain culture also. You're simply speaking a language and you're, you, you're carrying a, a whole culture, a whole people behind you. African students on the back foot, but continuing to defend their constitutional rights. We believe that we should come and support Afrikaans at this university instead that we've chosen today. We are here for a peaceful action and we want to protect Afrikaans at this university. 
But could this language debate be masking an even bigger issue? That of the urgent need to improve the quality of education in South Africa and not just to provide access to basic and tertiary studies for all. Whichever side of the argument you fall on, the battle lines have been clearly drawn. Civil rights organization AFRI Forum unending in its support of single medium instruction. We further want to ensure that mother tongue education is being implemented in schools. Uh, we have seen across UNESCO uh, and the UN, UN reports the numerous um, benefits of mother tongue education. We want this to be implemented in our uh, public schools as well. Because if a student understands the work better, he will get better marks and he will go into a tertiary institution or into the local community as an entrepreneur and, and give back economically. Yet, also conceding the benefits of tuition in all official languages. We must make sure that government takes responsibility to implement and to make sure that we develop African languages to a point where students can go uh, study and do their matric in, in the official languages of South Africa. University of Johannesburg language professor Anna-Marie Bierkes making a case for attention of Afrikaans. The whole issue of um, Afrikaans uh, schools not in a position to offer English tuition is I think a function of the fact that they are Afrikaans schools. Um, I think that uh, what our um, uh, MEC for, for education in, in, in Gauteng should consider is um, building more schools, making more um, space available for excellent tuition. The fact of the matter is that if the Afrikaans community prefers uh, using Afrikaans as the medium of instruction, learning and teaching, then um, I, I would argue that that is um, a good ideal and that um, the MEC should support that. But uh, with the lack of, of uh, adequate um, classrooms, I think uh, that is an issue that needs to be addressed first and foremost. The National Association of School Governing Bodies also supportive, but within a multi-language approach. Uh, if I to be specific, is that uh, uh, Africaners are part and parcel of South Africans. They must not see themselves as uh, a nationality or just a, a group. Because once they see themselves as a group, it's just unfortunate that they did not create themselves a homeland. Um, you know, we do not want to be taken back to the homeland. So that's why we are integrating. I think you know, Cindy, that we had homelands based on the languages, the Vendas, the yeah. Zulus, the Changas, the what. And uh, it's just unfortunate that maybe uh, uh, Afri Forum did not think of then uh, post-1994 that uh, maybe they would be having their own homeland where they would be practicing, uh, which we don't encourage. We are saying we are all South Africans. And one way of building Africans, I think we have to, we have just to market it. If we have to, if to, if to market Africans, market Africans in our schools, teach Africans. I mean, we have been doing Africans. Some of us, we did Africans and we never had problem, but we only had a problem prior 1990, 1976 when it became the language in the schools then we had a problem at that point so we can't say uh, when we passed over that thing then we have to go back but we are saying uh, we respect africans uh, we must have a way of also promoting so that it is part and parcel of the 11 languages that we have in south africa we really would like to sympathize with uh, uh, those groupings in south africa that are still not just the uh, nostalgic to, to the past, uh, in the sense that now, 1994, uh, I believe uh, South Africa became the constitutional democracy, where uh, it has been agreed that uh, there are 11 official languages in the country without really uh, undermining any other language that is inferior or whether it's superior to, but all these 11 languages were treated equally. And uh, I believe that now uh, sh people should not really believe that uh, 
when we promote uh, uh, the social cohesion through uh, the language and the culture, then, then people would think that now uh, a particular culture, a particular language has been uh, distinguished or has been destroyed. And I don't think that is the intention of the democratic South Africa. On the other side, the Gauteng Department of Education and the MEC Panyaza Lisufi, whom every forum accusing of attacking Afrikaans' culture in light of the recent Constitutional Court judgment on admissions policy. The Constitution has many provisions dealing with languages. And in this particular case, we are dealing with uh, a right to education. Um, and under the right to education, obviously, there are specific provisions dealing to education that people should actually be taught in languages that uh, are of their choice, but in public institutions it has to be, of course, the languages that are recognized in the country. And which are these languages? Section 6 of the Constitution. Uh, provides for 11 official languages. How is this ruling likely to affect schools and their functioning? Afri Forum is in the forefront of fighting for Afrikaans language so that when there are schools where the predominantly African speak, Afrikaans speaking people, they want those schools to use uh, the Afrikaans. Uh, and they will continue doing that. It is their right to fight for that. And I think they are fighting it fairly successfully. Opinions vary widely on the language issue. There is nothing wrong with the language of Afrikaans. In fact, we respect and we love the language. It is recognized by the Constitution as the language of this country. The problem becomes how perhaps the past of a particular country, like South Africa, the institutions themselves, you know, your predominantly or your previously cu uh, culturally dominated African institutions still perpetuate the very same mentality, the very same principles, the, the very same practices of apartheid. Now you're using language, language goes hand in hand with culture. So it is the, the manner in which the language is used or is institutionalized and the culture becomes institutionalized that is problematic. It's not the language that is problematic. Because you can remove Africans, the language, from an institution of higher learning. You haven't removed the problems of transformation in your residences, institutional cultures, institutional practice, and so forth. So the issue is not the language per se. A, a dual medium system, basically, what it does is that, my, or my experience of it, it creates two universities in one. So you have a university whereby, for instance, a, and it actually even polarizes it. Because if you have a dual medium, the majority of the students who speak um, Afrikaans are a specific color, in this case white, and those who generally speak any other language would then affiliate with English and are usually black, colored, in whatever the case might be. So it creates some kind of an elitist, uh, superior inferiority complex, preservation of privilege, given the historical context of South Africa, and then the rest just amalgamated into one larger, larger group or larger section. So what happens is that, for instance, uh, at the University of Pretoria, you have a situation where in one class, the English class, you have the majority of students, for about 600 in a lecture hall, and then in the very same module, you have about 30 in Afrikaans in their own lecture. So it's almost like this privilege or this elitist separation of, of, of races. It, it polarizes people, and it, it, it's against the social cohesion uh, principles and what social cohesion seeks to, to achieve as a country. Experts joined the debate against the backdrop of the 1976 Soweto uprising. The debate, uh, in my view, um, originated with the uh, entire uh, um, historical education setup, where English and Afrikaans have played a major role in, 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 in education, uh, and where the issue of teaching and learning through the language that you know best, in other words, the mother tongue um, or the first language, has become a very uh, sensitive political issue. Uh, we are talking about 40 years after the Soweto riots, which uh, uh, involved the issue of, of Afrikaans being enforced on students, on learners. 
which obviously was a, a most unfortunate thing that, that happened, should never have happened. So I think that has muddied the water a little bit as regards the, the issue of mother tongue education. While worldwide it is acknowledged as the most ideal way to teach young kids and probably also um, high school kids uh, and even students. So the origin is in the controversy, I think, regarding using Afrikaans as a first language or a, uh, as a, rather as a, a, a language of learning and teaching. The downside of all of this is that I think that our other indigenous languages, the nine African languages, have taken a back seat. They've been relegated to a back seat. We taught uh, in, in English and Afrikaans since, if I remember correctly, the mid-1990s. Uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was fairly successful. It's not the ideal because uh, it does impact on the time available for lectures in, in each language. Um, unfortunately, government did not make extra money available to uh, appoint uh, more lecturers that could share the burden of teaching in the two languages. That is one issue that, that I think we need to, to bear in mind. And then the other issue is that uh, in, in the era of the new democracy, more speakers of African languages came to the university as a function of um, uh, going to university and wanting good education. And those learners, almost without exception, prefer uh, English medium instruction. So it was, um, it was a, almost an organic process that, that happened. The department and MEC under pressure to get learners into schools. Uh, the two languages are culturally embedded in the sense that South Africa was colonized by the African speaking people in the form of the Dutch first and foremost and later on the English took over and then from there the two streams were fighting for their own cultural groups so there was a policy or an official policy to say Africans and English should be official languages of South Africa so they have developed to an extent that one is competing against the other. So they have got the cultural issues to look after in terms of their language. They have got their economy in which they're using their languages. And it will be difficult for one to dominate the other. And I believe in a situation of South Africa, this will be a situation that we'll have to accommodate. According to the distance, children must be able to access any school, not because you are not why it mustn't uh, be accepted. So I, I go for a situation where the children are allowed space to attend school where they are near. School governing bodies also concerned about the issue of single medium schools. I believe uh, the MEC has a, has a good point in, uh, in, in um, creating the, the environment where um, you know, children can be taught not only in Afrikaans, but it should be opened up to uh, other languages as well. And that way, you know, we have schools that uh, are not uh, half full uh, because children don't go there because they don't want to learn in Afrikaans. So um, on that point, uh, I believe um, the MEC has got a good point in, in the sense that uh, schools should, should have a dual medium. Professor Libby Menke at Wits University, lamenting neglect of African languages. And, and re really unfortunately, sort of African languages have been largely neglected until, until the arrival of, of the, the Constitution, whereas a language like Afrikaans um, was developed amazingly. I mean, that, that was a language that started from scratch in South Africa that had all the sort of um, government infrastructure to help it develop. Something that Eitzach Primary School and the Reed Centurion aims to address. Particularly in light of schools in 2017 having to learn at least one African language from grade one. Uh, dual medium schools will uh, uh, upgrade the, the students in terms of um, giving them the opportunity to be able to learn in a dual medium, either English and Afrikaans. 
But I think it should not stop there. Um, not all of our uh, uh, learners, uh, home language is English or Afrikaans, they have their own uh, mother tongue. And as a result, I feel that uh, you'll see better results uh, from the learners uh, if they are able to learn in their, in their own languages. Meanwhile, the violent protests at campuses prompting universities to do some serious head-scratching. What I'd like to, to mention is, is to talk about a little bit is, is what we're doing at WITS, because that's where I am. We've been working on revising our language policy. We had a language policy um, which we initiated in 2002, which had adopted English and also Sesotho. But we didn't do very much to implement it. So now we're revising our language policy, and, we, and it's on the table at the moment. We're going to approve it, we hope, this year. And we've adopted a multilingual language policy. So we, we have adopted um, Isizulu and Sesotho, obviously English, because that is the medium of, of um, education in the university, um, but also South African Sign Language. Clearly, the overarching ambition of establishing a non-racial education system deserves kudos. But at the end of the day, will government's plans improve the quality of education? And will they bring about the rainbow nation dream that the late Nelson Mandela and so many others lived and died for? Let's work together. Let's combine our hearts, let's combine our minds, let's combine our hands and plan a South Africa that will provide quality education to all its citizens. Schools can implement a policy of mother tongue education, which is a very important facet that hasn't been implemented uh, across the schools in South Africa. Bottom line, again, is that Mr. Lesufi should find funds to build more schools.